possibly find the connected components and undirected graphs. So how do we define actually those? So a component of an undirected graph is a subgraph of vertices in which each node can be linked to every other node uh, via one or more paths. So this is the mere simple definition. The size of a connected component can be measured in terms of either the number of nodes or edges that it contains. Okay. So when the size of a connected component is of n, then we say that g is not connected. Why is that? You guys should focus. Quite simple. Why is that? What is a node connected component? Uh, sorry, a node connected graph. All nodes in the graph are connected. So this graph contains n nodes, right? Then the size of the CC is like if it's n, then the graph basically is just one giant, you know, big connected component. So try to focus, don't get lost. So when the size of the largest component is smaller than n, we say g, that's basically the graph is fragmented, okay? Uh, so let's think of an algorithm to identify the connected components in a graph. I'll give you two minutes. Write down an algorithm to find how can we possibly find uh, the number of connected components of graph. Have you seen an algorithm like this before? No? Okay, so time to think a bit or maybe remember. Any ideas? Quite simple. Any simple ideas, guys? How would you go about this? Yes? Color. Uh huh. Uh, I color a node. Okay, you color a node, you tag a node, you visit a node. Let's call it you visit a node. Yes. Okay. Okay. Neighbors of the node. Uh, then, uh, Label them too. Uh, the, the neighbors of the neighbors. Until. Right, because you know the number of nodes in your graph, right? Yes. So you, you know, like, if you go. If you start with this one and visit the next one, right, so you label it, the, this one has no other connected nodes, right? So then you need to explore the other neighbor, the second neighbor, because once you visit a node, you cannot visit it again. So you visit this one, and then you look at its neighbor, so unvisited neighbor, so it's this one. And then when you try to find the unvisited neighbor of this guy, no nodes. So it means now you found the first one component at least. So then you can randomly select from the other one of the un, other unvisited nodes in your in your graph and start over again. Maybe randomly select this one, find its neighbor, etc. So actually, this is the <coughs> algorithm. Okay, and uh, this algorithm is called the breadth first search (BFS) algorithm. So it's an iterative technique of visiting all connected nodes in a graph. So first, how does it work? First, we select an arbitrary a node in a graph sheet, mark the node as visited, and place its neighbors in a queue. Okay. Next, after that, the enqueued nodes are sequentially selected as the next working nodes or, you know, the next nodes to visit, basically. Okay. So this will be repeated until all nodes in the, in the components have been uh, visited. So here, what we have, we have two things to keep in mind, the visited nodes and the queue. And uh, this is basically how it works. So you start from an initial node, you visit its neighbors, and then after you visit its uh, first, basically, um, neighbor, you mark this as visited, and then this is the working one, okay, the red one. And then you guys can see, it's like, you know, you keep on updating the queue, the visited, and the visited, basically, you know how many nodes you have visited, so at the end, you're going to have all nodes visited in that component, 
and your queue will be empty. So you at least have detected one connected component in your graph. And if you have more components, if you have other components in your graph, like something like that, you will know that basically this there are more nodes that you need to visit, so you randomly select one of those unvisited ones. Yes? Is it okay to randomly select the node with different endpoints or something, or is there some specific reason to randomly randomly? Right, so that's a good question. So the question is like, should we use this one, or like, you know, this is actually the simplest, most basic one, but if you find like a more, like, better algorithms with better time complexities, absolutely you can go for those, okay? So here, now, uh, let's look at how we can generalize this to directed graphs. So up to this point, we were talking about undirected graphs. So how do we define a connected component in, an, uh, in a directed graph? So here, what you guys see that first we have what we call a weakly connected component. So these two shaded components, gray shaded components, these are two weakly connected components. When we say a weakly connected component in a directed graph, it's basically we're adopting exactly the same definition for undirected graphs. So if there is any path, regardless of the direction, that goes from, uh, you know, one node to the others, like we can just, these are connected, then this is a weakly connected component, okay? So you guys can see there is no connection between these two, so they're not connected. But here, if we remove the directionality, we know that, these nodes are connected, so there is a path between any pair of nodes, so we call this weakly connected. Now for the strongly connected, which is a more interesting and specific to uh, directed graphs, so in this case we're taking into account the directionality, okay? So a strongly connected component is a subset of nodes in which there exists a directed path that runs in both directions, okay, between every pair of two nodes. So here, if you look at this uh, weakly connected component very closely, how many strongly connected components we have? So let's look at the, the, the blue nodes. We can go from A to B and back B to A. So that's number one. So there are like paths in both directions. Like for the uh, other ones, can I go, for example, can I color this, uh, tag it as orange? No, I cannot. Why is that? Because if I go from this one to this one, I cannot go back. There is no way back. So there is only one direction. So this is quite simple. But what do you guys notice? There is one property here that a node should, should satisfy, okay? If it is, it belongs to a strongly connected component in a directed network. What is that property? What do you notice here? If you look at these guys. So, for example, the orange... Uh, connected component, strongly connected component. Sorry? It's circular, so there is a cycle, right? So there is a cycle. There is always a cycle. So these nodes, they should always belong to a cycle. So to, to go from, let me select another color. So to go from here to there, you can traverse this one, okay? But, uh, but in this case, you know, like, uh, what basically, how can I go from this, like from A to B <coughs> using the other direction. So you can traverse any path, right? So this is number one, and then we want to go from like this way. So this is the second direction, right? You guys see that, right? It's very simple. So to go from this one to the, like from A to B, you either take this path, one direction, or the other path. So this is why, you know, there should be two paths that connect, like two opposite directions, two opposite paths that connect these two nodes. This is why we need um, a cycle, okay. So in this case, uh, this is, you know, the other component. So each node in a, strongly, in a strongly connected component should at least belong to one cycle. What about this node? So we also notice that we can have independent, uh, strongly connected nodes in a, in a directed graph, okay. So singletons, so that's uh, also possible.